Good. Navigate that. Yes. You still want somebody to like square their hips in a in a twist, but want them to honor the space they're in. Yes. Yes. I mean, and that's why this is hard. That's why all of this is hard. Is that paradox? That's why it's all hard. Is we're saying, you know, there's this there's this daily rhythm. There's this dinacharya, and it's totally out of sync with what culture is doing right now. It's totally out of sync with what most families are doing, with what most you know employers are asking of their employees. It's just we are we are out of sync. Like what's food for humans is out of sync with what restaurants are serving. Can we presence the just the amount of disparity in these in these paradoxes that are just part of being a human being in 2012 in New York City today right and now what we're gonna do is see how much we can line up to the life force inhale stretch your arms up fill with the life force let's let this let's take the pressure off ourselves to do this right and just move from the life force exhale bow forward you know if you're tired just exhale just let your eyes close feel that inhale lift your side bodies long stretch look up you know exhale fold Inhale, gather the life force between your hands, bring it up to the sky, and exhale, drop down through the crown of your head as you bring your palms together in front of your heart. You know, so just like really simple languaging around that, and then what is the organizing principle, right? And then how can we start to steer that? Now, after class today, you know, they're in Shavasana, roll to the side, sit up, sit for a moment, see the evening in front of you between now and when you turn your light out of bed. Now, how can you align to this life force? Just walk yourself through how you're gonna leave your yoga mat, how you're gonna leave the studio, where you're gonna walk, what you're gonna put in your body if there's anything more you need to ingest today so that you can sleep comfortably tonight. If you need to ingest anything to sleep comfortably tonight without waking, see yourself mindfully ingesting that, see yourself you know, winding down, going to bed, so that you wake up this life force. You'll notice you'll wake up, there'll be more life force in that. And when you wake up in the morning, do the same practice for five minutes. Just inhale and pull the life force in and just see if the life force can start to help guide you through some of this paradox. So it's just stuff like, you see the language, how it's like, it's not, I mean, I'm winging it, but it's kind of, to me, it's kind of like that. Whenever you find that, that there's like, there's these two things. It's like, well, what's the common, what can I root into here? And it often will be as simple as that. Like for me, I talk a lot about consciousness. I talk a lot about prana. I talk a lot about evolution. These are things that for me are, they're not questionable. So then I can always look at greater context. Yeah. Good. Any other questions, comments? Can you guys feel how it's important to do this in our teaching, but like in the greater context of how we're able to shift our students, that this stuff is, can, can really help accelerate or make faster their, their wellness path? And also, to me, it's just more humane. Instead of, instead of having people do these really great, amazing asana practices and not telling them how to maintain the open, subtle channels that we just worked to refine for the last 90 minutes, but we help them actually like take that and and then take that off the mat so that it starts to, you know, it starts to build. So the next time they come to the mat, the yoga's not as hard. There's not as much grunt work involved and there's just more harmony in our community. And we start to develop this culture that has certain things in common that starts to you know, there's certain things we do around here. We drink a lot of water around here. There's certain things, you know, how we are with each other around here where we support each other's growth. You know, and, and I know if you're having a hard day that, you know, I'm going to just help remind you of whatever you wanted me to help remind you of. Or, you know, we just consciously start to create culture around the practices, the diet and lifestyle practices that accelerate the wellness path. I actually have a question. Yeah. There is, um there was a yoga teacher who, I don't know, she was talking about her, her own evolution from veganism to going back to incorporating meat and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, this was like a, a blog post or a Facebook post, and she said, students, your yoga teachers are not nutritionists. Yeah. So, 
if you're listening to them to them with our nutritional advice, like, you know, just be aware right. that they're not nutritionists. Yes. So I thought that was really interesting that she was just, you know, showing about her evolution and, um, you know, saying how, like, the raw green smoothie is more like for her. Yeah. And so I just maybe you could speak to that. Yes. I'm glad you, I'm okay. really glad you brought that in. And that's why, too, with, like, the Living Ayurveda course, I'm not creating Ayurvedic practitioners because I'm not sure that's needed right now. What I teach and what we teach in the Yoga Lifestyle Coaching Program is all about just the basic daily lifestyle, right? And even, even if you're eating animals, even the eighth lifestyle practice of plant-based diet, those animals are eating plants. And anyone who's talking about eating animals is talking about eating animals from a, from a whole foods perspective. It's still way closer to the plants than it is towards anything that looks like processed food, right? Or the standard American diet or whatever. So in general, like, yeah, don't get, don't be like green smoothies are for everyone unless you're teaching a detox course or something like that where you're doing something for a certain period of time and you have a background in that as well. Like I don't, I know yoga studios are doing juice fast and whatnot and I, I think overall I think it's great but I also get that like they're, they're walking some fine lines unless they're, are, if they're just doing it as yoga teachers. So that said, what I am encouraging here, and I'm glad you're bringing this up, because it is, it is basically this stuff, like earlier dinner, lighter dinner, earlier to bed, earlier to rise, hydrating, meditating, or doing a breathing practice, some mindfulness practice, eating closer to the earth, or eating more of a plant-based diet. You know, it's just the most simple stuff, living in greater integrity, listening to your body, and listening like, is this food, and you can just teach a simple class, like, is this food good for me? Just noticing, just, just teaching people how to tune in to that. There's some part of them, the Vijnana Maya Kosha, that knows, is this good for me? So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cross the line into the territory of, unless you're trained in nutrition or Ayurveda or you have a whole separate you know, curriculum that you're added, I would just go with the most basic, like what are the daily practices of a yogi? And on my, and I didn't bring any, uh, I'm looking around because I almost always have them where I teach. But I have those, I have like the back of the postcards. If anyone wants them, just let us know at yogahealer.com because we do send them out. But it's just a checklist. It's just a checklist. Of, it's called Dinacharya, D-I-N-A-C-H-R-Y-A. It's just, it's party yoga. And that's what we're saying is like, no, we're not doing anything that's not outside the yoga tradition. Yeah, great.